still, I mean. Merch Minds Podcast episode number 93. Very special guest today. Right, Young? Very special. Uh, we have Matt and RJ from the Real Talk uh, podcast. Guys, it seems like it's just two days since we talked. <laughs> it really does. Um, to me, now we have no clue. Time gonna, uh, I said we have no clue what we're going to ask you now. There's just no. what? Hey, man, look. Uh, let's redo that intro again. You guys messed up. <laughs> Matt, this is your first time. Why don't you guys go ahead and just do a quick intro and let people know who you are. I was talking about Shopify originally, and I saw him start talking about this thing, merch. And I was like, what the fuck is this merch thing? And uh, that's how we connected. And now suddenly, you know, we talk every single day, probably more than anybody I talk to um, in the community. And then we started up a show at the beginning of the year. It's called Real Talk, where it's just, it's basically us just talking, you know, talking shit, going back and forth, interviewing people with merch. And uh, we just have a good time with it. I yeah, honestly uh, know. Okay, so 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 uh, before merch, you never had a YouTube channel, right? No, never have. So so just out of curiosity, what made you start your channel? Uh, well, basically, well, a lot of people were just asking me questions, you know, and I was like, I can't. But he should do. Are you drinking milk? Because you got kind of like a weird reaction to it. What what did, what didn't they like about it? Oh, I'm not even sure. Probably just I... uh, to get to know the individual, right? Besides sure, just yeah. just. You know, oh, let's learn, let's learn how to do merch. Like you also want to know about the person, so I, I, I find that really interesting. Maybe it's just you. You ever think about that? <laughs> I mean, again, I'm I'm no I'm no expert, but I would think, uh, regardless of what kind of channel you have, you you also want to let the people know uh, uh, that you're a real person and that you do have a normal life. And I don't know. That's just me. Um, I, I, mean, I, I, I yeah, I, th I think. Actually, I think Young's right. I actually think that you should keep vlogging because yeah. here's what I'm in. You want to start establishing, you know, at the end of the day, right? Like, like your channel is your end. It, it is who you are. And you want to start making connections with those people. You want to, you know, be able to have those people spread the word, everything else. So if you're losing people because you're vlogging about yourself and who you are, well, fuck them, whatever, man. Yeah, you yeah. probably don't need those subscribers anyway. So, but, um, kind of, but the thing is, though, too, is the views is the most part of the, one of the most important things, right? Glenn? Yeah, views. Right? Glenn. Yeah, views and like, um, I guess like watch time. Those are pretty yeah. much like the two of them that matter the most. And I was like, there's a lot of people too that when I first started doing like merch minds and talking to merch, like there's a lot of people that really didn't even care because it had nothing to do with shoes. Yeah, and, and they were just like, watch. yeah, well, a lot of people wouldn't even watch. They're just like, man, I don't even like those videos. I, even when I go to meetups, they're like, I just skip over those videos. And I was like, yeah. well, well, I'm still going to make them like. No, like, and, and, and and at the end of the day, look, regardless, look, whenever you put yourself in a position like that, um, and just, um, again, and I'm no expert, but I've learned doing this podcast, and this is for both of you, like when, whenever you put yourself in a, um, um, put yourself out there to the public, you're always going to have haters, like regardless of what you do and how nice you are and, and, and um, you know, like, like if you save someone from dying, right? Someone's always going to talk shit. That's just, that's just what I learned. And at this point, I just don't care. Oh, yeah, for right. sure. I mean, my fa so I actually enjoy it, right? Like, I think it's hilarious. My favorite thing about my YouTube channel is I have people that are subscribed literally just so they can go and put a thumbs down as soon as I release a video. Like, it happens every single time. Every time. Like, I get a bunch of... But share our numbers. Nothing's really changed, at least not for me. Um, so what are you guys doing in the meantime to, to uh, either fix that or are you guys working on some, something else? this something that's actually real um so i'm not on that we we've spent a lot of time over the last couple of days working on some designs specifically for those markets um and, and doing research to get ready for it but it, you know I, i've talked about this publicly really my focus you know i'm just getting all of that stuff ready getting the research done everything else my wife's going to take over from the design side my focus is entirely on local merch i, I want to build a business that can control um that's not dependent upon merch you know turning on turning off traffic anything else so that's entirely my focus. I spent the entire day today while I was working, listening to different podcasts, just trying to come up with some ideas about marketing and come up with ideas about how to generate leads and generate a funnel so I can automate a lot of this process. So I'm just working on, you know, signing these people, working on the business side of it, not working on going out there and finding these people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so speaking of marketing, um, I know when you first came onto the scene, Matt, you, uh, you were like really well known, uh, uh, 
for for on on you were like the person uh, uh who is like the expert and, and i don't I, I don't know i i, I feel kind of weird calling you guys like experts or gurus because i know some people just don't like that title but you were like the go-to guy as far as the ams ads mm -hmm. um as far as you know because i think you taught a bunch of us on, on on how to do ams ads um do, do you No. well i mean so i um uh... I, I spent a lot of time like learning AMS, the backside of it, everything else. I've actually got, I have one ad running right now on AMS because I can't run sponsored product ads. So mm -hmm. the way that I run my ads, um, I think a lot of people look at, look at AMS the wrong way. They look at it as like a la carte pieces that like you, sh you can run a sponsored product ads, but maybe you should run a display ad, maybe you want to run a headline ad, whatever, right? In reality, all that stuff works together and you need the sponsored product ads to be able to run the other stuff properly. It just kind of all creates a funnel that works towards, you know, setting up the other ads. So I've only got literally like one ad running right now and it's an ad I've had running for a long time just because it converts really, really well. It, it converts at a really low A cost. Um, if you're doing AMS, you have to manage it constantly. You have to sign into the dashboard multiple times during a day, check your bids, check how much money you're spending, see what's going on. Um, so I don't miss that at all. Um, <laughs> I do miss I do miss sponsored product ads because it was they they worked when you knew how to work them. Um, yeah. So hopefully at some point they're going to come back. I know that Merch talked to us with, about that when we were in Vegas. They said that they were working on a solution for us um, for advertising because I think it's important if you're going to be doing merch on Amazon, you have to figure out a way to get your stuff seen. Yeah, and we talked um, about that on your guys' show, right? On yeah, how to drive yeah, yeah. Traffic. So, I, I mean, my focus now, I'll be honest with you, even if they come back, I may run them just as, as something that's kind of, you know, low maintenance, not a lot of effort, low cost that can drive some views and drive some clicks. My focus is, is more on audi audience building in general, right? So audience building for local merch, audience building for our Etsy shop, and in turn with that audience being able to maybe possibly down the road, turn some of that traffic onto Amazon, onto merch to kind of spark the algorithm. Uh, that's my entire focus. I think that's where people should be focused. They want to be in this business long term, right? Like you want to be in focus on something you can control. Uh -huh. Cool. So, Glenn, um, did you have any questions? Yeah, a question for so for RJ. Like, so it's been a while that we, I think, interviewed like quite a bit of months already. But I think when we when we did interview, you're telling us about like you had uh, you had hired some people to do certain things where like designs you pretty much had like how many people working for you like maybe like three or four at the time yeah and so it's like do you have more people working for you less or why did it change um let's see so I one two three yeah, so just to see what it's like right so i opened up an account and i went on there and i uh uh uh, uh and, and i posted a job right and i offered mm -hmm. A little more money than, than other people were, were offering. And I started getting all these uh, uh, applicants messaging me, right? And I swear, man, and Glenn, I don't know if it was you that I was telling to, or I don't know if it was you, RJ, behind the scenes, but it's like 95% of the applicants that, that were graphic designers, man, it was all freaking clip art stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right? So I'm like, how are you, like, so just out of curiosity, like, how did you go about finding those right the ones that had a decent, portfolio i would say hey let's set up an interview uh they mm -hmm. don't even respond yeah there there's one at uh, i think it was like behance.net that's the one right uh -huh. behance yeah, not yeah Doro about interviewing them because the stuff that i got was just horrible and this one chick even uh, uh submitted some designs that i've seen mm -hmm. uh uh, uh they're like pre-made designs you know and, and you see the ads all the time i can't remember the name on the top of my head um, she's claiming that those were hers. I'm like, these aren't your ads all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! You just gotta be, go okay. ahead. No, I was, well, just I, was saying, ask, I was gonna ask your yeah. like backstory is like when you started, and what is I guess you know since then. So um, when it started, it was literally it was just me and my wife, right? Like, so my my wife is an interior designer by trade. Um, and that's how she knew how to use Photoshop and everything else. And she'd done some stuff with like SketchUp and, and other design programs. And so just as a kind of like a whim, she had started up an Etsy shop um, uh, two years ago. And it was because every all of her family members were hitting up for like graphic design for like invitations, cards, that kind of thing. Sure. So she started doing some stuff on Etsy. And um, we got married last year in April and we were just looking for a way to kind of pay off some of the debt from the marriage. And that's where I kind of started looking into some online stuff, looking at FBA, looking at eBay, looking at, you know, and that's how I found merch. And I was just like, well, this is like a perfect fit. Like you were looking to do some graphic design work already. You know, we just have to upload the stuff. We don't have to put money out. Like we're trying to pay down debt anyway. So that sounds like a win-win. 
Um, you just throw the shirt up there and it sells, right? Like that's the way it's supposed to work. So that's kind of how we got started on it. Um, and a little bit to our detriment, you know, that's kind of what we stuck with for the last, you know, pro almost the first year where it was just, it was me and her, right? Like on top of everything else we're doing and trying to scale the business, she'd design, I would upload, and that's the way we would do it. And we finally bit, bit the bullet at the beginning of this year and, and hired a couple of people to the team to kind of help us out. So we have two illustrators that work for us. I have another girl that was working for us to help upload to Amazon. I've actually moved her over to Etsy full time. She's doing work on the Etsy side to manage that shop. Um, I'm, I'm doing all the work on Amazon stuff, but I think, you know, this is something that me and RJ talk about all the time. Like if you're really going to build a business and be able to have something that makes a lot of money for you, you can't be the thing in your business that holds it back. You can't be the thing that like locks everything up. That's, that's the bottleneck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. It's like a very important thing. I think up and looked at places like online's job pH, but it's discouraging because again, like I said, I mean, the stuff that I said, they sent me was just, it was almost like grade school art stuff, man. And then, right. and then, um, um, like I said, and the people that had the half decent portfolio, they don't even respond. It's like they'll message you, and then you message them back, and then send right? me your uh, send me your ad copy, as young, and I'll look it over and I'll uh, sure I'll share your mind. Like, so here's the thing with online jobs: like, you get a ton of applicants, right? Yeah, yeah, I've got so, about fifty. Yeah, you get a ton. It's really easy to weed them out, though, because you only like who actually read your your ad and who's just submitting crap every time they see an ad pop up, right? So put a little question in your ad copy that they have to put a response in the subject line for, right? So to make sure that they actually read it. And if that's not there in the subject line, mm -hmm. don't even bother, just move on. Because you know that person can't follow instructions, it's not worth wasting your time. Exactly. But there's, there's a lot of talent on there. There's a lot of talent on there. You just have to sort through to get to it. Man, man, the stuff that I saw, so, so like, like I was just discouraged. That's why I was just telling you guys, you know, on your guys' show, man, look, F all that. I'm just going to go back to what I've been preaching all day since day one and just go to the local university, man. You can hire these students. That's a good idea, too, man. Like, yeah, yeah that's, that's the other thing, too, is like those people, they, A, they're already in the United States. They understand like copyright, all of that stuff, right? Stuff that sure. you're going to have to explain. They're also going to have a better idea of like what an American is going to be shopping for versus a Filipino. Um, like that's a lot of the work when you have a designer, when you first start out is explaining, like, you don't need to make every design orange, like orange is not a really popular <laughs> color. I swear to God, like every Filipino designer I've ever worked with, like they want to put orange in the design. You start outsourcing some of your, uh, your stuff. Uh, I don't know. My brother was helping me for a bit and then, um, then after I got suspended, I didn't even like try outsourcing after that. So I don't know, maybe. I don't know. I'd have to really look into it and see. I guess one of the things that I was going to ask or, or bring up to you is like, so when we were on their show, remember I was telling you that you brought on Penji, mm -hmm. your numbers haven't increased, but I wasn't like trying to like dish, you know, like this on Penji for that case. But I think as far as your design background, you had clever ideas, you knew, I mean, everything that was going on, like you said before, you've already proven it. Like you have low designs and you're making really good money. Mm -hmm. So I guess my question would be even to you is like, would you go back to even yourself designing? Do you think that would help bring the numbers back up? Cause you've already found success no. with that. No, no. Well, well, here's the thing. No. And, and I've said this on the show, right. On, you know, a couple of days ago on your show, like I'm no longer going to design at the moment um, because it's, I'm driving myself crazy to the point where I'm, you know, obviously I'm, I'm balancing other projects. And at the same time, I'm, 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 I'm designing and I'm uploading, but there's no sales, right? Like, like when we did our seven day numbers on, on your guys' show, my numbers have tanked, yeah. right? So it's like, what's the whole purpose of designing, uh, uh, when nothing's selling. So I'd rather just have Penji do my stuff for the moment. Right. Um, and look, whether you like them or not, look, I like him, Glenn, I showed you some of their work that they're doing for me behind the scenes. I think it's legit. Um, and so, so I have them doing my stuff at the moment and I'm just focusing on other things. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, so there's two ways to get like return on investment, right? Like you can either get return on investment on your money so you can like spend money for somebody to do work sure. for you or return on your time. So like basically you can put the time and the work in, right? Um, at the end of the day, your time is limited. You can only, at the end of the day, your time is limited. You can only have so much time, right? So okay. money is really used to scale up a business, especially if you can find people in the Philippines, in Venezuela, you know, wherever they are, where the dollar goes a lot further. And that's just the way I look at it. You know, for me, this is a side hustle. I know for Glenn, this is a side hustle for you. You know, for Young, it is too. Um, so it's like, how do I maximize my time 
you know, which for me is the most valuable thing. Well, that's how I can that's build a team cool. some way, you know, and even though they're, they're not as good as I am, right? Like they're not as good maybe at research or they're not as good as design as my wife is. If it's like 85 to 90% or even 75%, right? At scale at a large enough number that kind of makes up for everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, and, and I will say this, look, um, when, and if you guys go back and listen to the earlier shows, right? Like, like the like the whole joke in the community with me was I couldn't get out of the thousand tier, right? Right. For the for the life of me, I could not break the thousand tier, but I was but I still found success, right? I had like three hundred shirts, and I was doing three thousand dollars a month, and people were going nuts because my ratio was just through the roof. Um, uh, and just to prove my point, I now you know I have more shirts than I've ever had at this point, and nothing selling. My numbers yeah. tanked, so. I'd rather focus on other things. Like, I think I'm probably, not probably, I am at some point here in the next few weeks going to hire a VA to do some administrative stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, because for the life of me, again, I can't find a decent designer. They're, they're, they're doing stupid stuff over there. Um, no disrespect to the Philippines, um, but at, at least he's gone through the whole process of finding the right designer. And you can't do that? I can't, but again, I just don't have the time. Hmm. And like I said, do it for someone and there's no communication. What's the whole point? So what that is, that's that's more of like, that's their identification thing, right? To prove that it's actually a real person that's applying sure. for the job. Um, so I actually put that way down because I want more applicants because I'm going to be able to grade that out based upon like what their response is and how they respond to the email. Um, so I want responses as possible. I'll funnel it down. You know, it, it requires some work. It's a lot more work than like free up or even up work. Um, but I've had better luck. Mm -hmm. Okay. How are you guys doing your research? Top secret. Yeah, don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about that, y'all. What's, the whole, what what's the whole point of doing the show then? There's demand. Where are people like buying stuff? So, you know, think about things for like the holidays. Think about like back to school. So seasonal trends. And then also figure out how you can combine that with other things that people are interested in. So like dogs, cats, unicorns, teachers, whatever, right? Like there's so many ideas. Ideas. I, it just it, it boggles my mind when people talk about how like well, I don't know what to design for. Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, go look out, go walk outside your door, yeah. look around. Um, you know, the, the okay. thing with research is you need to be designing for things that people want, not the things that you want, right? Like, I think people on merch like they throw up a bunch of designs because this is really cool. I like it. I would buy this. Nobody fucking cares. Like, design for the, something that like somebody else wants. That's what they're gonna buy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I agree there. Uh, because you know, I might be into something completely different than than the general public, and you know, it's in the, it's the general public. They're the ones that's going to tell you what the market is, right? If if, if and you know, I, I guess there's ways to do research. You know, there's um, I, I heard people talk about um, uh, uh, Chrome extension, so you know, that's something that I'm not going to really discuss. But if you guys are interested, I mean, you can definitely go that route as well. I, I, you know what, man, like, and I said this in the newsletter, like, I talk about it all the time, like, Merch Informer, man, it just makes it so freaking easy. It, it, like, it, it does. makes it so easy, like, especially when you understand how Merch Informer works, and you actually use it the way that it's supposed to be, you know, use the favorites, use all that stuff, you use it all together, it's really, really, like, it just, it makes it super easy. Your keyword data is all right there, like, you know, you can see how many results there are, you can see how they trend, how many sales they've had in the last, you know, 60 to 90 days, like, I don't know. I, I I made a video about it, and like it was like people that had no idea that you could do any of the stuff that I was doing. It. And I'm like, this is all from the very beginning. Like, if you guys just watched Neil's videos on the Merch Informer channel, that's how I learned this. It's not like I'm some freaking <laughs> genius that put it all together. You know, Neil's the one that figured this shit out. Yeah, yeah. right, right. No, I, th I think I think <laughs> you bring up a good point because he does have a, like a library of videos where yeah. you log in, but for some reason people don't watch it. Like, and then, they, and then they when they to... subscribe, and then when they subscribe, they get frustrated because they're like, "I'm not getting the results that I that, that, that I want." And you're like, "Well, have you watched the videos?" Right. Well, go go watch the videos. Yeah. Yeah, that's another thing too. Like, I get frustrated. Like, I was they just they will not try. Like, literally, just go to the Google machine and type in your question first. Start there. Like mm -hmm. they just they go to the Facebook group and just qu answer you know ask whatever's on their mind. Yeah, but yeah, and you can tell like I'm sure you can tell in your group or when you interact with people like who's going to be successful and who's not. Like like the ones that are that are not asking the stupid questions that like they'll ask a detailed question or they try and help people out right off the bat. More often than not, those are the ones that are actually going to have some success on the platform. Yeah, yeah, uh, or like the ones Absolutely. like I'm interested in merch. How do I start? Yeah, right. <laughs>
Yeah. No, I, that, and, 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 I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I was gonna. I was gonna ask Glenn. Do you get that in the eBay too? Like, is it the same over there where people are just like, well, "What do I do?" Yeah. Oh, it's it's like that all the time. It's even especially when it comes to like you know flipping shoes and things like that. Like, man, I just watched your video. Super interested in in. Uh, where, what store should I go to? <laughs> or like, been there like yeah. two years ago. Yeah. That technically, I almost have to like almost refresh them because they get lost in there, and then people aren't gonna watch. You know the right. Whole yeah. But yeah, you get like the same. Technically, well, those questions and the detailed ones, which those you know make more sense. You can help them out right. with the details, but the beginner ones, it's like you know those are there. Those answers are already. Oh uh, man, but I tell you what, though, man, uh, I prefer. The merch community over the reselling community any day, though, man, because that reselling community is just cutthroat, man. They just, dude, you answer, like, I mean, if you, like, honestly, like, ask a simple question because you don't know, right? They will freaking rip you apart. They'll talk <laughs> about your mom. They'll threaten your dog. Oh, they, they do all kinds <laughs> of crazy stuff. It feel like Reddit or what? Oh, yeah. I mean, it's nuts over there, man. I don't know. Red, that Reddit merch community is something else. <laughs> Just, but you know, but you know what? Neil brought up. Speaking of Neil, dude, we should have had him on the show. We brought up his name so many times. He brought up a good point, though. It's not. It's not Reddit. Yeah. It's the me on Reddit. That's just yeah. really stupid. Oh, yeah, no, I agree. Yeah, I'm talking about all right. See, I don't do that, right? Because, again, like I said, I understand a lot of people are new. Sometimes, honestly, they just, as stupid as it may sound, they just don't know, right? Yeah. So I don't, you know, I just, you know, it's a free-for-all. They can ask whatever they want, and I just kind of monitor it. Um, you know, based on that, um, and then and if people get out of control, you know, they, you know, step in and you know try and try and make things a little calmer. But uh, you know, but yeah, I mean, I think people honestly, you know, sometimes, you know, even though I see the same questions over and over again, I just I, I'll, I'll let that through because again, they just don't know. Yeah, I mean, you know, if if they, you know, if they weren't that lazy, you know, they can obviously go on Google themselves and and and, and search it, but. Uh, you know, so my thing is like, there's a search function in Facebook, right? Like, in there the is, and people don't realize that. They never, they never use it. So, however, kind of like YouTube search function doesn't work the greatest at times. Search function works a lot worse. So, if it wasn't something that was fairly recent, it's really hard to find the answer sometimes. So, I, I have some sympathy. Um, one of the things that we had to do like a couple months ago, because our group got to a certain size, is we had to start really policing it because we were getting a ton of spam in, but also we were getting like questions like instantly. Somebody would ask a question, we'd approve it, and people would be like jerks. You know what I mean? Instantly, mm -hmm. like just, and that's not the the vibe we want to have on there, right? Like we try really okay. hard to have it be a positive place, be a place that, you know, we have some fun. You know, if you if you do something really stupid, might make a comment about it, right? But it's not because I'm not going to call you an asshole or, or, you know, make you feel like you're a horrible piece of crap. Um, so that's part of the reason why we had the you know the the approved post thing because otherwise it just it gets out of control. Well, this is this is this is what what we started doing. Um, this and this was um, uh, uh, this was um, we got this idea from Anthony. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was saying uh, start collecting email addresses because at one point it got so bad because we weren't doing any of that right. Like like yeah. we would approve anyone uh, and everyone and and you know anyone can post anything. Well, it, oh my gosh! About a year ago, it got to the point where it was like a fucking Craigslist, uh, uh, a Facebook <laughs> group. And people, were, oh, I need money, you know, you know, buy this. And I remember this one chick; she was almost half naked, right? She post posting herself and stuff. Is that your girl, RJ? <laughs> is that, is yeah, that yeah, it, probably, it probably was his girl saying, "Hey, can you send me some money and this and that?" And it just got out of control. So, and, and when we met Anthony in Seattle last year, he was saying, "Dude, he goes." Start collecting this is not just for internet marketing, but it, it validates that they're a real person. Yeah. Right. If they don't do that, don't accept them. And it's gotten much better. Um, every now and then, you know, it, you know, they kind of get through the uh, the filter. But um, um, that's really, really helped out a lot. Yeah, for sure. This particular person, um, because I noticed the last couple of days they were making some weird comments that just it, it just. It made no sense like the, uh, uh, this person was being I asked and I'm like, hey, do you guys know this person? What are they about? And you guys were like, yeah, that person's a, you know, uh, uh, they got a from our group. Yeah, they got asked from our group a long time before they got from yours. So. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it, you know, it's 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 a lot of work managing a Facebook group. Um, um, 
No, I, I love the interaction with, with members and, 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 the, and the community. Right. Young's even better in person, though. <laughs> Young is better in person, for sure. <laughs> oh, man, I love it, man. I, I, you know, the whole interaction. Like, I've said it, man. Like, I, I can learn stuff from someone who's on a tent here and, 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 you know, someone who's not even on merch. I mean, I, I mean, I just love the whole interaction part, man. How, I mean, there's a, there's a good reason why I always spend my own personal money and, and go places and meet up right. with people that do merch. Cause, cause I love it, man. Like yeah, I can I mean, learn so much. You never know what somebody knows, right? Like just because somebody's on like the 25 tier in merch doesn't mean that they have, you know, four or five Etsy shops that's crushing it. I talked to a guy last night that, crushes Etsy. And he's just like starting to get into merch. He was asking me some questions or whatever. Oh. He was referred by somebody I knew, so I knew he was legit. But it's like, you, just, you never know. Like, just if, if your impression of somebody is what their success on merch is, how person they are, you're looking at it wrong because you never know. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I know you guys asked me about the whole uh, Amazon Printful integration yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on Wednesday. Have you guys thought about doing that? Are you guys doing it? I've thought about it, uh, especially with fourth quarter. Um, but God, man, I got so much on my plate. That's the thing, too, it's right? Too like, much, I, right? I wrote it's about so it. I wrote about it in our newsletter this week. You know, you got to figure out like what game you're playing and what's actually moving the ball down the field, actually getting you results. And that's yeah. where your focus has to be. Like, if you try and do everything, you're not going to get anything done. Mm-hmm. That's what Bo said too. Bo, I was like, I was like, how come we don't upload your like your designs on other platforms? I like that spot. Dude, okay. Skillshare is, is the bomb, dude. Um, because it's, it's it's you pay like a low monthly fee and you can watch every that's freaking cool. course that's in the library, right? Um, yeah. that's where I, that's 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 where I learned how to do Shopify uh, about a year and a half ago, and I and I had, and I'm one of those guys. I you know I completely forgotten, right? This guy mm-hmm. that we interviewed, because I was you know we were interviewing him, and uh, uh, we were talking we were talking behind the scenes, and he goes, "Hey man, uh." You know, I can just give you access to my um, to my Skillshare account, and you can just you know, there's a good course on there. And I was like, oh man, I already have a Skillshare account. How come I didn't think about doing that? But yeah, ab- okay. I forgot about that spot, that place. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Now, um, Matt, um, is Erin still doing most of the designs? Um, it's a mixture. Um, so she's doing um, a lot of the um, the the other guys that we have that are working for us. They're doing a lot of the actual artwork. So we do a lot of just original artwork for ourselves now. Um, which takes longer, but you know, it's a one way to really differentiate yourself from the rest of your competition. Um, I have two really, really talented designers that like they can just do anything basically. So, but my wife will take that and then she'll, you know, add sayings into it, add, you know, typography or whatever, mix and match, do all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we're thinking about hiring a designer at some point. The other thing too is like not only we do merch, we have two Etsy shops. We're talking about doing a third Etsy shop that's more like home furnishing type stuff, not apparel. Um, so it, it would be nice to have somebody that can help with that. Cool, cool. Glenn, what's going on with your Etsy store? <laughs> Anything on Etsy? <laughs> no. What did we just what did we just say about focusing <laughs> and YouTube? twenty other projects? Uh, you, what? And YouTube? Man, come on, man. Get it. <laughs> Whatever. No, no, but seriously, have... it's an extra project, Young. It's pushing it right now. <laughs> huh? I'm just saying. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll put it in the back burner. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Um, but speaking speaking of all that, um, I know uh, Glenn had mentioned um, possibly doing FBA during Q4. Do you guys resell at all? Uh, I don't anymore. I know RJ did quite a bit in the past, but I don't think he's doing it anymore either. Are even are you? Uh, you were talking about getting into drop shipping at some point. Did, are you thinking about doing that still? Uh, I'm not even sure. Uh, I don't even know at this point right now. Well, technically, you are. I found that a lot of designers are great at taking something and you know changing the font a little bit or making it look a little bit better, but they're not great at coming up with like their own original ideas. It's it's really rare when you can say, "Hey, take this idea and I want you to make something you know completely different, but still has some of those elements." Like they have a hard time with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. No, it's you know it's I'm one of those guys. You know, uh, I you know I'll say. It's not easy to be creative, but at the same time, it is easy at some at some time, right? Yeah. So it, it just kind of comes and goes. It really just depends on this on, on what you're trying to do. Um, but um, I think overall, I think uh, I think most of us have a creativity side. 
if you, if you really, really just sit and just try and think about what you want to do and um, 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 and just apply it, I think I think most of us can do it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know a lot of it, like all of us that are in this right now, that like all of us that are in this right now, right? Like we're we're creative anyways. Yeah, that we talk and everything else. Like we have no problem holding a conversation about pretty much anything. Um, so that that all pays off. Like it's just the ability to be able to put two different ideas together and, and find something new. Uh huh. What, what tier are you on again, Matt? We're 6K. 6K. Are you guys close to being uh, tiered up? Uh, well, we probably will be fairly shortly. Um, but uh, we've got the sales for 12K. It's just we got the same problem as you. It's just getting up, you know, getting stuff up. Yeah. You know, and then we hadn't we hadn't uploaded since the beginning of June. That's that, what, you know, yeah. yeah. So I remember you saying we that had, we had lost over almost 2,000 shirts had fallen off our account. So we're starting in the process of re-uploading those right now. Okay, I was just going to ask you that. I'm like, do you guys re-upload? Yeah, I mean, the, the non the uh, since, 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 right. what's the What's the whole point of having them on your hard drive if you're not going to upload it? I'm uploading as we go. So oh, I got, that, I, oh, no, now you're uploading. Okay. <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a question. You know, I talked to Jacob Bates, um, uh, and, and and I thought about it. In fact, he's the one that told me, dude. You know, he's the one of the guy you know that I talked to. He was telling me to just check out online's job ph. Yeah. Um. And and I talked about it. And um. Maybe I should uh at some reach out to him again. Um. I thought about it. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just thought about it just in terms of like, for scale, right? Like just as an easy way to to yeah. add on some stuff really really sure. quickly. Um. You know, I know a little bit about Matt Carlett's process in terms of what's not just you know, shit thrown against a wall. There's actually research. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's something I've thought about a little bit too. Like Matt's a great interview. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. No, he knows his stuff. For he sure. knows his stuff. He's, he's real sharp. Yeah. So yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm open to uh, trying them out. Um, what about you? Uh, uh, I just think, I think it might take me even longer to try to figure out, even though they're simple, maybe just so used to like illustrator and shortcuts and all that. Like I think sometimes just trying to learn something like, Real basic might take me a while. <laughs> I just figured, like, I already know this program. I could kind of like what RJ was saying, like, you can really knock out, especially knowing the shortcuts and all that. Like, especially with Pop Sockets, like, when I just sat there for an hour, I know I could just knock out a bunch of them because they're so simple. Yeah. But mm -hmm. yeah, then you got to upload. It's yeah. so hard to sort through. Like, if you're trying to edit things, you know, like the fact that we have to use tools like merch tools and pretty merch and stuff to be able to get around things mm -hmm. is a gigantic pain in the ass. And then just, uploading things right can't you set it up so you know i can put in a number or say i want to open up 50 tabs and it just does it for us i don't understand why we have to do all this stuff manually there's so many workarounds you have to do to be able to like be efficient yeah. when you're uploading i mean I, you know i think you know when we met them in vegas and we had a conversation i yeah. think they understand that this you know they're still going to the whole growing pains because we saw the frustration in in um miguel um so uh, uh i think i think they understand going through, but at the same time, I think they're trying to grow as as a company, um, and there's only so much they can do. Um, and I think right now their 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 focus is on uh, going international and, and the collab. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think collab is definitely a, a big part of their focus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Speaking of collab, you know, um, one thing I will say about that. I mean, I know we're not really supposed to talk about it, but this is just in general. And I was telling. I was telling this to Glenn. Um, you know, I don't watch a lot of YouTube. Yeah. So uh, the other day, man, I was because um, I think it's pretty. I think almost everyone knows that I've been approved for collab. Man, I, I went on Shane Dawson's channel to try my, <laughs> you know, to try my get like a catchphrase or something because I've never watched his channel before. Like I don't yeah. know what guy's about. How'd that go for you? I couldn't yeah. do it, man. I, I, I um. So we're in it too, and we've kind of had the same problem, right? Like just I, finding something that resonates so that like I feel an attachment to and that I really want it for, I think is important uh -huh. if you're going to do something that's really good and stands out, right? Uh -huh. And we just, we haven't found that yet. Yeah. I, I'm not going to sit there and watch any more videos of his, man. I just, <laughs> <laughs> it was just a huge time suck, man. I was like, I'm not doing this no more. So, but cool, man. But, um, you you guys working on um, other things? I know you guys. So talk about your uh, your your newsletter. I know that's relatively new. It is really yeah. good, and, and I and I encourage everyone to sign up. Yeah. So we've been doing it for like five weeks. It's something me and RJ have been talking about for a while, right? So um, 
it's just kind of a way for us to, because people interact different ways, right? Some people like to watch videos, some people like podcasts, some people like to read, right? And it's all about like what, how you can better utilize your time. Um, for me personally, like I make videos, but it's not like my favorite thing to do. Um, mm -hmm. Every video I do is is either it's something I just I shoot really quickly and I don't think about it and I just get it over with, or I do like 15 takes and it, it takes up like four or five hours. <laughs> it's like four or five hours. It's super annoying. No, exactly. Like these emails that we've been collecting, right? And like, why don't we just start putting the information out there? Because the other part that was kind of pissing us off is people were selling the stuff that we're giving away for free and charging the community for it. I was just tired of it. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just going to put something out that's kick-ass, that's really good, that's free, that people can interact with, and they're going to know where the information comes from. Mm -hmm. You know, and yeah. then R RJ is, you know, helping us with, like, doing videos for the audience and ideas and everything else because RJ doesn't like to write. Oh. Yeah, no, we, we, we're talking about that. He was saying that he doesn't like to write as much. Yeah, so I'm like you in the sense that I like to write. Yeah. Um, um, and, uh, you know, I, I guess technically I have a YouTube channel, you know, back when I was doing selling. Um, in fact, someone just asked me this the other day. Yeah, someone asked me on, on Wednesday because right before we did your show, yeah. I was on, um, on, on, a, on a reselling channel. Um, this, is, this is Mo, Glenn, by the way. I was on his oh, channel. Man. Um, and one of the guys that was there, they're like, "Hey, uh, how come you do YouTube videos?" And I was like, "Well, I guess technically I do, but I'm I'm just like, like you in the sense, Matt, where uh, you know I do like 15 takes, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm like Glenn in the sense that, well, if I do a video, like I, I want the editing to be on point, right? Like if you watch Glenn's video, like I mean, music and you know the fades in and the fade out, like everything's on point. Like I would want to do that." And like editing a freaking ten minute, like two hours. I'm like that. Look, that's right. It's easier for me to get my thoughts out and to kind of put them in a in a structure that's easy to understand. So we have some some cool things planned out um, that are that we're thinking about doing with the newsletter, like some exclusive um, some excuse exclusive like Q and A stuff. So you know, having like a, doing like a Zoom session where people can do you know a Q and A with us, everything else. So this is just kind of the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. No. Again, um, where where, where can people go and sign up? Uh, Merchnews.email. So just merchnews.email cool merchnews.email um cool man you know i think that was a great show rj any any final words uh make a video for uh for the crate space how you upload a journal for me um hopefully that will maybe uh encourage you guys to create a diverse thing yeah cool. for sure um all right guys well thanks for being here and um we'll talk to you soon